Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, And she conceived by the Holy Spirit, Behold the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. The word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. Let us pray together. Pour, Pour into, into our hearts your grace, O God, that we to whom the incarnation of your Son has been made known by the message of an angel, may by his cross and passion be brought to the fullness of his resurrection. We pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
A reading from the Gospel of Luke. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him, Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer, night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. The word of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of Jesus Christ the one who was and is and is to come. Amen. Christmas is all about God finding us and us coming face to face with God. And sometimes finding God happens in a dramatic and sudden way, as when God intervenes in the lives of Mary or Joseph or the shepherds. But I think sometimes Finding God takes a little more effort on our part, that we need to do some seeking, some searching, as the Magi in uh, Matthew's account of the Gospel do. But Luke's Gospel account also has its seekers, and from what he tells us, they've been searching even longer than the Magi, Simeon and Anna. Simeon has been promised by God that he will not die before he sees the face of God's anointed, the Messiah. And Anna, we're told, has spent her life in prayer, awaiting the redemption of her people, rarely leaving the temple after the death of her husband. They represent the faithful remnant of Israel, those who are not just passively waiting for God to act, but are actively seeking signs that God is acting in the world, that God is bringing about the fulfillment of what God has promised. In this little scene from Luke, we see Simeon and Anna, representative of the Old Covenant and those who are faithful to it, coming face to face with Mary and Joseph, who represent a new covenant and something new that God is doing in the world. And what brings all of these people together is this child at the center of it, the infant Jesus. When Mary and Joseph come to the temple, they bring with them an offering of two doves, the sacrifice that the law allowed those who were too poor for larger animals like a lamb or an oxen. And as we stand at the threshold of Christmas, perhaps we also need to acknowledge our poverty before God. There is very little we can offer God, except, as I said last week, maybe a simple act of love. We can also leave sacrifices like our regrets, our grudges that we continue to hold, our resentments, the fears that hold us back and keep us from trusting God and our future to God. Maybe we can sacrifice those things. Simeon takes Jesus into his arms, recognizing the very one that he's been waiting for all his life. And Anna comes running with joy to see the one that she too has spent decades praying for. God is inviting us this Christmas 
to embrace Jesus too, to hold him close as Simeon does, and to share him joyously with others as Anna does. The light of Christ is meant not just for us, but for the whole world. But as Jesus will later tell his disciples, you are the lamps. You are the lamps meant to be placed on a hill, not hidden under a bushel basket, but placed on a lampstand where you can shed the light on everyone. Sounds nice, doesn't it? But Simeon warns us that embracing Christ, trying to let Christ's light shine in your life, it doesn't necessarily make you popular. It doesn't make your life easy. And it will almost always pitch you against those who hold the power. This child will be a sign spoken against by many that their inner thoughts will be revealed, Simeon tells Mary, before adding ominously, and sorrow like a sword will pierce your own heart, your own soul as well. The shadow of the cross doesn't just fall over Jesus. It covers everyone who will be close to him, everyone who will continue to try to follow him. And yet, Simeon concludes, it's worth it. For even when the worst happens, when death itself comes as it will soon for Simeon, as it will for Jesus, as it does for us all, Like him, we can close our eyes and rest in peace, knowing that we are saved by a light that has come down to shine in our lives into the darkest places of our world. Not just the darkness of our sins, not just the darkness of our poverty, not just the darkness of the world's violence and injustice, but even in the darkness of death itself. And if death can be conquered, then what chance does injustice and sin have? Throughout Advent, we've been reflecting on light, a light that is first kindled within us as it began in Mary at the Annunciation, a light that begins when we entrust ourselves to God, a light that grows as we share it with others around us in acts of charity and compassion as Mary did when she visited Elizabeth, a light that no darkness can extinguish, even the darkness of fear and poverty faced by Mary and Joseph in the Nativity. And tonight we finish our Advent journey listening to Simeon, as Mary did, proclaiming that this light is meant not just for us, and not just for our loved ones, but for the whole world. And the way that this light spreads is when we ourselves carry it out, as Mary carried the Christ child into the temple and then back out into the world. The light of Christmas is meant to be a light that shines for you and within you and from you all year through. So, Despite what you may read on bumper stickers, don't keep Christ in Christmas. Let him out, take him out, and let his light shine. Amen.
God of glory, you guided Simeon to recognize the Messiah. In a newborn infant, open our eyes to see your presence with us, between us, and working among us. You are a light to enlighten the nations. Fill us with the hope, peace, joy, and love of Christ's coming, that we may be renewed in strength and become your holy people serving your kingdom in this world. You are the glory of your people, Israel. Confront our perplexed and confused anxiety and ease our minds with the promise of your faithfulness. Strengthen us to carry out our service to others in righteousness and trust. Let our souls be pierced by the suffering of our world. With Mary, we receive your light into our hearts. With Joseph, we make a place for your light in our homes. With Simeon, we proclaim your light to the world. Our, our eyes have seen your salvation, our Lord Jesus. Dear friends, at the presentation of our Lord in the temple, Simeon recognized the infant Jesus as the Savior that God had promised. He warned Mary that sorrow would pierce her heart, but that Jesus would be the light to all nations. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Lord, to come with me to the altar of God, where I will light a candle for you, or if you are able, you can light a candle in your own home. And then take a moment of silence to ask the Lord to shine his light into the sorrowful and hurting places of our world, and to use you as a means of sharing that light, perhaps praying in your heart. Lord, let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. This we ask in the name of the light in our darkness, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathering all our cares into one, let us pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Go with joy and let Christ's light shine in the darkness. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And we wish all of you a very Merry Christmas from all of us here at St. John's.